Hello, I'm Atuba George and I bless God for this opportunity to bring God's truth to you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love, which is expressed in the giving of your word. And we receive it with thanksgiving. Burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I was sharing something with you yesterday from John chapter 17. Teaching you something about Jesus and his ministry. Because you need to understand the foundation of this. Then we go into what we're talking about concerning the tithes. He said, Jesus speaking in John chapter 17. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. Now look at verse 2 is where we're going. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. So who gives eternal life? Jesus. He has the authority. Only him have the authority to give life to me. And you see, he obtained that authority. Now, even though it was written concerning him, it was on his own part to fulfill the ministry that was written concerning him. So as he yielded himself to rescue man first from death, we, we don't understand the ministry of Jesus yet. You see, if Adam and Eve had not sinned, there wouldn't have been a need for Jesus to die. He would have still given man life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It was because of their sin and because they have yielded themselves to be prisoners to Satan and to death. So Jesus, in trying to rescue them, to rescue man, so that he can give life to the man that he came for. He had to die. Now, he was willing to die. The moment he showed that willingness to die, then he showed to the Lord that he qualified for this ministry that gives men life. That's why he spoke here. He says, as you have given him authority over all flesh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, you know there, are, there are arguments that this John chapter 17 was written, or uh, this prayer was prayed after his resurrection. There is an argument because of certain statements that Jesus made here. Now, whatever, but he was speaking by the Spirit here. So he was speaking the truth. So that was his ministry. Now, because he showed himself qualified, his ministry became eternal. No one can take it from Jesus. Now, that's why, listen, you cannot find life in any other religion. Take Jesus out of it. It's not about religion. It's not, oh, there are many ways to God. Listen to me. Without Jesus, you will not receive life. Only him has been given the authority to give men life. Now then, the same thing he did. So he gives us life today as our high priest. You remember Jesus said to Martha, Lazarus had died, you know. So he got there and, and, and Martha said, Oh, if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. And she made a statement. She said, well, even now that you are here, anything you ask the Father, I know he's going to give to you. Okay. Jesus felt, okay, Martha is connecting with me now. You know how you feel as a preacher. You know, someone, oh, I don't know what happened, but thank God you are here. I believe things are going to change. Okay. All right. So, and then Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And he said, yeah, I know on the day of resurrection, Jesus said to her, Martha, I am the resurrection. <laughs> oh, 
you, you know, I feel the anointing of God's Spirit rested on me. I have I felt that <laughs> since from day one. When we start, I just feel that anointing. And, and the truth is, I'm just flowing as He's taking me. I'm telling you the truth. Do you know the meaning of that statement? I am the resurrection. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And she said, yeah, I know. On the day of resurrection. And Jesus said, hey, I am the resurrection. And then he said, and the life. No, you don't get it. On the day of resurrection, I believe my brother will rise. Oh, because, I mean, he's your friend now. He follows you. Hey! The resurrection is on the day, right? He said, yes, it is me. <laughs> Meaning, you don't have to wait for that day. The very thing that will make your brother rise on that day is me. And I am here now. <laughs> you know, he, 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 he finished. You know, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he is dead, he will rise again. And then he made a very powerful statement that the church till this day haven't come to terms with. He said that anyone who believes in me, anyone who is alive and believes in me will not die. And he turned to Mother and said, do you believe it? I can ask, I can just answer for mother what part? <laughs> what part? <laughs> you just said two things. Now, which part am I supposed to believe? The fact that my brother will rise now or that I am not supposed to die? <laughs> yeah, that's what Jesus said. Anyone who believes in me, he, though he is dead, he will rise again. Now, whether today or the future, because they believe in Jesus Christ, they will surely rise again. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then he says, anyone who's alive, no, meaning they are not dead, anyone who's alive and believes in me will not die. Let's leave that part. The church is defining it difficult to understand or interpret that statement. That's not for today. A day will come when the Lord will allow us to teach on this. He said, hmm, I am the resurrection and the life. What does that mean? We don't have to wait for that day. Your brother is rising up right now. Why do we have to wait for that day when I'm here? If you wait for that day, it's still me, you would meet. If you wait for now, it's still me. And what did Jesus do? Lazarus, comfort. The same way. Ah, the same way he is going to do it on that day. The same way he's going, oh, Marapu Dasha. Do you know when the trumpet, ah, when the trumpet sound, ah, mm, 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 mm. the Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise. Do you know what that means? They are going to hear Jesus call their names the same way he called Lazarus. Jesus just gave us with Lazarus a preview of what was coming. That's why he waited four days. She said, by now he is thinking. So four days, 40 years, 1,000 years, it makes no difference. When the resurrection and the life calls your name, you will say, yes, sir. It doesn't matter where the particles of your body have been shifted to. It doesn't matter where. It just doesn't matter. You will hear his voice and you will shout, Yes, sir! The grave on that day cannot hold you. It can't. No, it can't. Why? Because the one who's calling your name, they've had an experience on how he dealt with them. Praise God. So, so when they hear you, you know, just like they are hold, we are holding this one back. And I told you, everyone who have died is under the bondage of death. You better believe that. No dead man is in heaven. No, 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 no. No dead man is in heaven. They are all under the bondage of death. Now that's why Jesus said on that day, he <laughs> says the dead shall hear the sound of the Son of Man. And those who hear will live. What are they going to hear? Pam, pam, panana. No. They will hear their name the same way Lazarus heard his name. Lazarus! Comfort! 
you, you at that moment, it doesn't matter what's who you hear your name. <laughs> Even the demons holding you, you know what I mean? Even death itself holding you when he hears your name. They've called him home. Okay. Alright. You're gone. Even you, we just walk out, you know. You, you. <laughs> All right, so Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit, as a high priest, you see what he is ministering now as a high priest. Can you see? No, we haven't known him yet as the resurrection. We haven't. No, we haven't. We, we, we don't see him today as the resurrection. We are still waiting for him on that day. The day of the resurrection. That's what we preach. That's what we say. So, the same way he died to make man free. So that he can minister life to man. <clears throat> it's the same way the Bible says he became poor. So that we, through his poverty, might be made rich now what does that mean he willingly surrendered his wealth he willingly gave up the glory when i mean glory earthly glory that he should have walked in he willingly gave it up he gave it up willingly why did he do that because part of his ministry was to bring on us a blessing that will cause us to function on the earth as the seed of God. Now think about it. If someone gave up his wealth for you, what does that make you? That makes you wealthy. Right? If someone said, I'm giving up my wealth to you. Maybe your name is John Okoro. I'm giving up my wealth to Mr. John Okoro. What does that mean to you? It means from that day, whatever glory that person was walking in, whatever thing you see in that person that calls, makes you call him a wealthy man, belongs to you. So your status have changed. Now, because he did that willingly, see, the same way he was willing to give up his life, to save mankind from death. The same way he gave up his wealth to save mankind from poverty. You remember the curse that God gave the earth when Adam and Eve sinned. Now then, Jesus gave up his wealth. Let's continue from here tomorrow because my time is up. You need to get this. This is everything I've been saying. This is where I'm taking it to. So we'll continue tomorrow. Bye-bye.